news is I think the chips died. Um, I'm going to give it one last crack. I'm going to give it a few seconds to re-energise whilst I get rid of the 20 million apps I seem to have open on my phone at the moment. On my tablet, sorry. And we're going to restart and see what it says. So it sees it is plugged in, which is good. Headlights. Nope. Completely nothing. Outstanding. So, just to clarify, if I pop this on the layout next to it. Option three, three, function one. Stands, stands, starts up just fine. So, I'm not sure what's done it. But something has. Manage device. Device health check comes back fine. So, I do not understand what's going on here. If I put it into DCC control mode, um, does that give my, that suddenly works now, wonderful. Okay, not sure what I did there, but something helped. I can feel that vibrating. Ah. Huh. Okay. So we've got a little run by because uh, I've managed to make this work now. Okay, let's finish that drop into that. So again, this is my other model, which has got the Backman chip. Oop. I will smash these together properly. I think actually, on hindsight, I can tell which one's powering. But even if, even with that, my overall feeling is I've not seen these running light engine to prove it. But if you're only running with two HST power cars, there's no point running both engines. There just isn't. That's done. That's done. So. Headlights. I think that's brake sound. If I go back to the controller, or the DCC, the iPad, sorry. So if I go into my locomotive setup now, and I just say Bluetooth. Okay, so it's turned it off, which is fine. And I've got no control over it through Bluetooth. Fascinating. That's fine. I'm not planning on using it this way. But it just means we now know what was wrong with it. So overall, <laughs> I've got a pair of Sanfit HSTs for change out of 100 quid. Took a bit of faff, but actually, that's pretty cool. Um, I can fiddle with the sort of profiles and stuff in here a bit. So I could probably make that a bit louder if I wanted, to be honest. That's as loud as I need it to be. Could maybe knock it to like 110%, but that's just me being me, you know, wanting it to be a little bit everything, you know, a little bit more everything. Um, to be honest, the one thing I don't like is obviously the uh, initial pull away. The revs don't synchronise. And that's because obviously the, um, the, the the Backman chip doesn't have a HSD profile on it. Whereas the uh, sound decoder does. So, you know, that's the one drawback of this system. Um, I could have put it in the lead loco. But this gives me more operational flex. Because what I can do is, like I, like I sort of said, is I could, you know, do say a test run uh, where this is pulling a Mark 1 and a Loco. And the Loco is what's actually powering the train, but this is just there rumbling away, making HST sounds. So yeah, overall pretty happy. Um, let me know what you guys think in the description down below. As always, don't forget to like the video if you did. Subscribe. We'll see you next time. Bye for now. Well, just imagine the whole went off there. Bye. <laughs> in the last sort of minute and a half here, what I've done is duh, 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 fitted the other
power car with its chip. As you can see, that's the Backman chip in the nose there. Well, not in the nose there. Um, but yeah, that is basically job complete on this. I've also somehow managed to wrap my buffer. There we go. My buffer around the bodywork, but that's fine now. But you can see that's obviously now removed. So I can just pop that. So that is now in, in the way it's supposed to be. So I'll pop it down over here for now, just to be safe. I never put the body shell back on until, um, you know, until I've tested that the chip works. Mm -hmm. With this one, we're gonna have to do the, um... oh, sorry, I had a YouTube video start playing in the background. With this one, we're gonna have to do the little encasement for the speaker. Um, again, I'm just gonna probably like, lie everything on it initially, just until I can get it all situated and tested. Um, Come on, 15 seconds of wibble wobbling, wibbly wobbling. Um, yeah, apart from that, nothing really else to, to report in the model railway world. Um, I'm hoping to get one of the Acura Scale 37s and one of the Cavalax 56s, but we'll let's see how that all goes. There we go. So you can power cycle your... So, okay, lift it up. So I'll tick that box, lift it up. There we go. Okay. That is the process. So we'll dismiss that. And uh, so it should now have, yeah, the HST on it. Profiles. Okay, so if I go to here now, aha. So if I say I want to go to daylight running, yep, that works. Horn. Wow, that's even without the case. That is a really good sound. Oop. So you've got um, high, low, low, high, which is fine. There you go. That is an MTU HSC, all right. That is really impressive, considering the fact that it says you've got to have the, the little case on for that to work. Cylinder cock. Yeah, doesn't have one of those. Um, let's see anything else here of interest. So I think it's just the standardised stuff here. Um, oh, that's the um, the roof light, which is quite cool. I wonder, can I go from... No, I've only got daylight running on this, which is fine. What on earth? Okay, I was just testing. I think that's must be coupling up. Okay, if I go. Has this died? No, there we go. And then functioned. I've got no idea what that's meant to be. It's down as guard's whistle. Um. Oh crap, okay, that was me jostling it off the tracks. But anyway, so what we'll do, we'll finish today's exercise off. I'm putting this in its little case, so we're gonna stop the layout for now. Just stop these chips. And now I'm gonna choose my case. It's gotta go in the back here. So probably, to be honest, this enclosure here should fit pretty well. Yeah, it'll just go sort of crossways in the base. I'll lay it in there and then tape it down. I'll probably even just blue tack it, actually. Yeah, so what we'll do... Um, I presume they're sort of opposite each other, right? That would make sense, wouldn't it? Yeah, this is the, the largest case, so... I'm presuming this is the biggest. Bear with me. Bear with me, guys and gidgets. Bear with me. So... And then that would, so you put the chip in. Let's look at the manual. It's on this side. So, huh, okay. So it's actually very completely different than what I thought it was. So what we do is we take this. We take this, the base. 
and these two attach to each other, in theory, and in practice, wonderful. And then I take the sugar, the little cute, um, speaker here, and I take, oh crap, <laughs> so I do have a number of these, these track pins loose lying and it, it immediately attracted itself to the speaker, but no visual damage was done. So we peel that off, and then it goes into the face down. Right, so I'm just gonna do this. Again, I wanna do this off camera so I can actually give it my full attention here. There we go, so that should be adhesed now, or adhesing. So I'm gonna hold these two together for a little bit. But if I just do, if I resume service, probably shouldn't be touching that actually. Um, yeah, I think that it's not reading at the moment, which is fine. No, it should have it now, so. Hmm, anyway. Doesn't matter, but we've got that plugged in, which is the main thing. And what I can do is that will just sort of wedge under here. Yeah, so it's actually going to probably get a bit sort of wrapped around. I wonder, could I? I could actually put that just under the main bodywork there. Not that I've not that I've put this on, but for next time, you know, we can we can just tuck it in like that. It should be fine. Now. What I'll do is just click this together and then we'll do a quick little run by just to show off what the effect the effect this has. Again, it's going to be sort of crooked body work and stuff, but I'm not too bothered about that right now. Just give me two seconds. Five minutes on the clock. Yeah, I still got five minutes on the clock. It wasn't my layout, so we'll try it again. I've not even power cycled it because I don't see the point. Yeah, there you go. So it's just worked this time. So that is an issue with the Hornby side of things, not my side of things, which is good. That makes us happy. There we go, done. So, you can power cycle, look, would you like to, yes. Please power cycle your decoder. You can power cycle your decoder by removing the output from the track, wait five seconds, and then replace it. If you have a power bank installed, you may have to wait up to, you have to wait up to 60 seconds. So, one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, four, five, Six. There we go. Gave myself a second for insurance. Okay. So, um, we're going we're gonna to stick to address three. I will rebind these at a later time, but for now, I'm just going to stick to address three. Control mode will be Bluetooth because that's what, what I'm going to use. Um, okay, that's quite cool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a name. Just because I may get a couple more of these in future. Rail Adventure 43. Yeah, we'll just save that and done. Click off it. So, um, we could put an image in if we wanted. So, I'm just scrolling through. Um, import, so, in function maps. So, what does this do? Okay, that's fine. I'm just seeing what these are. Browse profiles. So we'll do a locomotive profile browse because it's been quite handy. Because hopefully this will mean we can import HST. That's quite cool. So all profiles. We've got a default A1, A373, MTU HST, um, Valenta HST, a Gronk, a 31, a 66, 56, P2, Princess Coronation, 2P, all the steamies you could ever ask for, and then some. So that's all right. I mean, I'm going to probably stick to... I'm going to stick to the MTU on this for obvious reasons. It being an MTU and all. Uh, and we'll install the locomotive profile. So, updating APROM. Uh, it says estimated time remaining. I'm not sure. Oh, it's seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. But the Thunderbirds, I go... Da, 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 da. Also, my apologies for the mess over there. 
That's actually the mirror. So you're looking at my, that is Blinky the mascot and that's a dress bag. And then that is a mini Mickey Mouse head. Because, you know, so it's going to take 10 minutes. So I'm going to catch you guys in about 10 minutes, like eight minutes, fifth, eight and a half minutes. All right, see you guys soon. Yeah, Bye. Now. Apology. My apologies for that, guys. I've literally been, you can see there's a little gronk there, bottom left of the shot. Um, that is what I've been using to test the layout to make sure it works. Um, you know, because basically if, if I hear the sound cut out on that, then I know the power's gone. But otherwise, this should still work. So we're just updating the firmware at the moment. Like I say, I think that's really good because it means, like I say, if stuff changes or stuff's improved, then we get the updates. You know, we're not sort of shackled to um, whatever, you know, the, the chip left the factory with, basically. So, yeah, we're just going to give it a couple of moments to do its thing. Um, I don't know why I've got Yorkshire tea bags in my... Basically, I've got like a little drawer of modelling supplies. And I've got a slightly demolished box of Yorkshire tea in there. <laughs> it is a proper brew, but I just I don't have a kettle in my room. So why have I got Yorkshire tea in my room? I also have, and I bought these... Good. Uh, for the Pullman. Um, the old Midland Pullman uniforms and stuff from Backman. Now, I've got stuff like, um, I've got some stuff to do and, uh, you know, like even things like, we're gonna, I'm probably going to detail these in an upcoming video. So, you've got some point motors, you know. It's just stuff to talk about whilst this does its thing. So, it's, it's good, though, that it is updating. I'm doing this all in real time for your guys' benefit more so than anything else. It's so that if you decide to purchase yourself for one of these, you know what the process is. And we're now doing the APROM firmware. No idea what that is. I presume... I've got no idea. Bluetooth... For fuck's sake. This is this is probably my layout, not thing you're doing it. I've got and the working. You can see we've got the headlights and tail lamps now. Perfect. So, what we'll do... Function zero to turn those off for now. And we'll restart the scan. There you go, found it immediately. Oh, got to wait, got to wait for the scan to finish. I mean, it's the only one here, but we'll let it do its thing. There we go. And I'll go, boop. So it's going to link to the chip in, in my uh, loco now. What we'll do is just wedge this in there like that. What it was actually doing is when I pressed function one on the chip, which I've got, to, I've got it turned off for now, it was actually making a noise, it just wasn't an intelligible sound. Error link to device, please. Hang on, I didn't get a chance to read that. Let's try and link to again. So just to clarify. Oh, for Pete's sakes, I think I've lost it. Basically, bit of context. My, there you go, so I'm plugged in. Not touching the layout at all, which will mean that this should now scan correctly. But I do love the 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 the, the um with my layout, the the way my decoder works, and but the my controller works. Sorry, is uh, all the lights sort of trigger on the locos, which is quite immersion breaking. But actually, when you look at it like this, that the red is so dark, it's perfect. So it wants to do an update, which is fine. So we'll just say start the update. I'm going to do this all in real time purely so that you guys can experience it too. And that way, you know, if you were to go and get one of these, you know what you're getting yourselves in for. So it's updating the Bluetooth firmware. So this will be on the actual chip itself. This, I think, is quite good because it means that if Hornby ships a thousand chips and then they realise X is wrong, that can now be fixed. And to me, that's quite good. That is, that is a good sort of option to have so to speak um now when it comes to the second hst that's gonna be a really quick and easy process i'm not going to uh, make you guys watch that because honestly i just i don't think you know i mean you you've seen me fit dcc oh, please power cycle your device and because i touched the layout that's what happened i know that could have been bad actually One moment, I'm just gonna use this as an excuse to. What I'll do is function one, 
if I just see if I pop it in over no, that'll not help. Matters. It's a bit more firm in there. I think it's my phone that's heating. Well, give me a second, I'll fix this. This is my fault. So basically, my layout still uses these things. That's where I've put all the mess for the purpose of the video. And obviously, whenever I put, whenever like stuff, you know, they can get disconnected. So I've not wired my layout yet because I'm lazy. I'm sorry. Now ask me to link a device. What I'm going to do is move this into the foreground because you don't really see the logo whilst to do this. Nope, there's no way for me to do this without moving the logo. Okay, let's gently move you along. And plonk you here. Right. Link device. Start the scan. So it'll start scanning now. Try and find uh, the decoder. It should be able to do that because the decoder's plugged in. I don't think it is working properly. Right, stand by. Okay, guys. So you join me in a slightly further along process. I've got the uh, controller, sorry, the uh, loco plugged in. Uh, we've got the chip fitted, got the um, speaker motor sort of thinging around. For now, that should be functional. So, on my iPad, I'm now going to really quickly say yes, you can use that. I'm going to log in. So, the blanking plate has just been removed. You can see. It took quite a bit of force to get it up, actually. But it's uh, got it off there now. So, what we'll do is... going to access our chip. Mm, I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do. For, actually, no, I'm going to thread this speaker through first. So, this is the bit where I regret not preparing a knife for this video, because I didn't think I'd need one, if I'm honest. Thanks, Hornby. So. There we go. So, we're going to do the speaker first, as I said. And we'll just shimmy it out the bag. So, what I'm going to do is this is the most space on the loco. So, I'm imagining taping that in to sort of this position here. And now, all we do is we feed this through. So looking at this, I'm going to compare this to the chip when we get it out of the bag. But yeah, you can see the shape that we need it to take. Again, we'll just pop that outside. There we go. Just very carefully holding this. So this side will be down. Mm, okay, so it'll go this way up. So I'm going to plug this in first. Ooh. There is absolutely no clear way up here. Hi, by the way, in case you can see my head. Um, no, there is. It's this way. There was a little indent on the model. That should just press in now, right? There we go. Click close. So that means that's going to form a good connection. I'll just pull it around the side. And then... Again, I'm going to do a jump cut whilst I get this fit, just because this is the sensitive part of the process. There we go. Magic. Right. This is what the HST looks like under the hood. Basically, you just you undo four screws and peel it up and up and over itself. Um, now, I could, in theory, disconnect that probably, but I, actually, I can. No, I'd rather not actually, just for safety. Now, immediate thoughts when I look at this: Where am I going to park this thing? What do I mean by that? I'm probably going to put the speaker in this area here. Thread it under the housing from a fan and then plug it in over here is the theory. 
what we'll do is we're going to ease the um, blanking plate off. It's going to be even harder on the real model because instead of a lead weight here, it's got an engine. Or has an engine there somewhere. I could probably actually put it up there. Mm. I'm not too sure. I'm going to do some figuring. I apologise for getting my, my mouth so close to the microphone. That, again, going to be a jump yeah. cut to get this on. So, this is a 21 pin decoder. Main difference is it's got 21 one holes and the, 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 the shape of the chip is different, obviously, because it does slightly different things. This is a Backman Easy Command 21 pin decoder. I believe I paid 24 dollars for this in a model shop near me. Now, the problem we have is I quite like having sound fitting to my, sound fitted, sorry, to my locos. With the nature of how these are set up, we can only really run them as light engines. Um, so, but even regardless of that, the rough cost of, to me to get a, um, a pair of DCC decoders fitted with sound, you're looking at about 160 quid. Well, 110, 130. Yeah, 130 ish quid. I have a slightly better idea. I've gone and purchased myself a one of these. This is a 21 pin Hornby Bluetooth and DCC sound decoder. What does this do for us? Well, this is basically a blank sound decoder in here. So, for example, I've not got one handy, but here's the box. This is my HST sound decoder. You can see it comes loaded with class 43 HST MTU sounds. You can change what's on it, but it's a bit of a pain to do so. Is that just manuals in there? It's just manuals. Um, whereas this, in theory, I should just be able to load whatever I want on here. Now, because these are running back to back, um, you know, coupled effectively as one multiple unit, uh, you know, reasonably permanently now, the you won't be able to tell the difference if one of them has a sound chip and the other doesn't. It's just the way uh, modelling is because in the real thing you've got a lot more space, so you hear a vroom, they won't go past, and you hear the room. In this, you just can't tell the difference, and it should save me in the region of about forty quid doing it this way. And then a little bit. So, well, actually, 40 quid if I'm doing it on the cheap. So, right. If I wanted to do a bit more advanced stuff, it would cost a bit more. What we're going to do is we're going to fit this into one power car. This into the other. Plan is probably going to be to do, I believe, the unpowered be on the bottom. I'm going to put the, uh, the, the, the speaker in the unpowered one. Give, gives it a bit more weight. Um, so to perform a little better, but also gives me a bit more flexibility. Uh, one of the sort of concepts I have is taking one of these on a test run, sticking a Mark 1 on the back and a 67 on it. Well, if I've got a powered vehicle, it becomes difficult to have two powered vehicles in a formation. Whereas, um, yeah, with this, I can effectively do whatever I want. Um, oop. Wanted to power the track just so you could see the lights on, on the front of this thing. But apparently that's not possible right now. Hmm. Oh, that's why. That's become detached. There you go. So the plan will be to um, wedge that in there. Like that. We're going to fit, like I say, this sound decoder first. This is going to be the, the more complicated manoeuvre because I'm going to have to program it, and that'll probably take the longest. So, what we'll do is we're going to pop this thing out of the box first. I'm not going to bore you filming me taking this off, but I do just want to give it a quick little test once we get it done. So, let's open the box, see what we have inside. Okay, quite a bit of stuff just falling out. So we've got, let's see what we'll do. Just for now, I'm going to power down the track. That way we don't damage anything or ourselves. So... That is basically just saying what this chip does. So we don't care about that for now. Again, I'm putting a Hornby chip in a Hornby logo. If this breaks it, we've got a problem. You scan this QR code here, download the app, get the app going, and then uh, gives you the app on that. Oh, this is actually a proper little full, full manual. Cool, 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 cool. 
Um, this is the, the manual in German. Good, I was, for a moment I was worried this wouldn't ship for the speaker. Now, this is quite an interesting speaker setup. This is basically a motor. And it comes with these sprues, which have a bunch of airtight cases on them. Now, what these do is you put these together. So you put your motor in this and then put the chip on the roof. And that creates an airtight case. The motor vibrates the air in the case, which then vibrates, um, you know, vi vi vibrates the case, which then makes a sound. Because, again, basic physics, air, uh, sorry, sound is just air vibrating. So what we shall do, and this is obviously your chip here. So this is up. Um, so you've got a little plug for the speaker there. Cool. Cool, cool. Okay, let's do this. So, I'm going to... Well, what I'm actually going to do is leave this for now. I'm going to take the roof off the HST. And then, what I'm going to do is click my fingers and the HST will be topless. Uh -huh. Hello there, everyone. Welcome to the Model Railway. A.K.A. the building site that I'm pleased to call a railway. So, not much has happened since we last spoke. However, I've been doing some thinking. You may remember I purchased these bad boys right here. My Rail Adventure HSTs. Now, these are the 2021, 2022 tooling, sorry, I believe, of the Hornby HST. Now, these have one crucial difference from a quote-unquote regular, well, from, from their, their previous HSTs. And that is, really note on the manual, actually, here. These are 21-pin decoder. Or a 21 pin chip. Now, what does that mean for us as modelers? The standard up until, you know, a couple of years ago was the eight pin chip, which is this thing here. This thing here. You can see if you look closely, that's the chip there, and then it has a bit of circuitry here. Sorry, that's, that's the circuitry there, and then that's the thing. So it's got four pins, and then that's the actual chip itself. Well, a 21 pin decoder looks quite a bit different to that. Um, and I've lost it. Crumbs. Hello there, everyone. Welcome to the YouTube video here on the channel. Actually, no, don't welcome yourselves just yet. 